No problem. Stones and the spirits in this place have begun to heal. Hail, Estramor. Hail, Estramor. Builder's wisdom to you. What brings you here?
Sure. Yeah? Why not? There, done. This won't stop me for long. Why not?
You have stayed true to our cause, Inquisitor, when so many others have not. For every heretic we confess, for every betrayer that burns on our pyres, new sheep continue to flock to Ivara Exensios. But not you. I underestimated you in the beginning, but no longer. It is not for honor that I summoned you today, but for duty. Too many of our own have confessed upon the wheel and the rack and the flame. We have but one option. Yavara's following must see her exposed for what she is. Not in Kratom, surely. Their lord has embraced her heathen faith and protects her with his army. But in Osionis, things would be different. The king of Osionis is a sinful man. You have already done much for the Inquisition. I wouldn't ask this were there any other choice. Turn around, flesh creature. Outsiders are not permitted to approach the elms. Do you not feel it, sister? Something familiar. An ancient soul, like the other one. Another defiler, no doubt. Let us fell him and be troubled no more. Hmm, so it would seem, Rhiannon. But we must not hasten to judgment. I see a different motive here. Different questions in these eyes. What of it, young trespasser? Is it as my sister says? Or are you here to stain this place with foul deeds? There! By his own admission, Sheetha. Really, sister? And you wonder why your leaves begin to fall out before midsummer? Clearly that man did not want to be followed. Whatever the relationship here, I suspect it is anything but cordial. The answer is yes, old one. We crossed paths with Theos not long ago, and we can tell you where he went. But I find it curious that anyone would seek him out. Suspicious, even. So that is the reason he passed this way. This is low, even for the Leaden Key. I told you we should have confronted him, Sheila. He has always been a poison. It would have been the last thing we ever did, sister. Who can be said to have ever gotten the better of Theos? Yes, but imagine how much fun it would have been. But that's not what this is really about, is it? You are bound to that man. I see it now. You are awakened. Your soul is awake and something once buried deep now wells to the surface. I am sorry to tell you this, but Theos cannot give you what you seek. Nor can any man. An awakening cannot be undone. The soul is formless without a past to shape it. Did you truly expect to be able to wipe it away? However... As much as my sister speaks truly that there is no way back from an awakening, there may yet be a way forward. I would. Were the way not so likely to end in death? It may, but not all deaths are alike, and the man you pursue is versed in thousands of them. The man Theos you must already know by now. You are linked by a common past. Something about it lingers within you, fast. But were you to learn the source of this discord, perhaps it could be put to rest. Though it is equally possible it will trouble you as much now as it did then. You might wait for it to come on its own, of course. But when it comes, it will replace your sanity's last breath. Or you could learn it from someone who already knows. It is said the gods made his memory perfect that he may never forget his charge. Not that he would tell you, of course. You have followed the right person for the wrong reason, it seems. We see it often beneath the elms, the soul dragging mind and body to unknown places for unfathomable reasons. You may have wandered into Theos's path many times, in many lifetimes, 
without an awakening to show you why. The only thing that's certain is you did not find what you sought. He has gone down beneath the tower to a place older than we, where the people of Engwith once walked. May he stay down there and rot with the remains of his people. He may yet. He won't be returning the way he came, that much is certain. He opened a secret path in the tower's base and saw it destroyed behind him through some vile means. We know of one. On the burial aisle, through the court of the penitents, Brayeth Yaman. Don't be cruel, sister. The way my sister speaks of is not for the faint of heart. A great pit at the center of a forgotten court, where faiths were judged in place of crimes. The pit is said to have been a means of judgment by the gods. Those cast into it are meant to die. It is that way you must pass to reach Sun and Shadow. The court is old. We do not know much for certain, no more than a ruin now. It is older than we, a place for the trial of heretics. We were not here to witness it, but at one time there was a group that refused to acknowledge the gods. Neither the first nor the last, of course, but these were numerous and all put on trial for it. The fall killed them, of course. The prison was not for people, but for their souls, and their sentences were eternal. It is said that many of the condemned repented and were permitted by the gods to ascend from the pit, so long as they pledged their service to one of them. Behind us is Ter Evron, said to pierce the shroud itself, and a place of communion with all gods. I would pray first to those gods you like best. I hope for your sake. The feeling is shared. Not the only way. Just the only one that doesn't end with your body impaled on jagged rocks. None. Ter Evron is also called the Hall of Stars, and the stars show us the allegiances of the gods. You should choose a place to pray where you'll be closest to those you want to hear you. If a god stands alone, you should pray to that god. If they band together, you should address them all. What do you wish to know? There is something about this place that reaches beyond our understanding. Something like a beacon. Sometimes it is for love. Sometimes for vengeance. Sometimes for peace. Or vengeance. The same way that you are no doubt able to peer into the ether and experience the souls of others. You share certain... similarities with the man you pursue. For your sake, I pray they are few and of no consequence. There is little to be said about us, for we are bound here. We have seen the elms grow tall. We have seen cities built, burned, and built again. The only constant has been the tower, a silent companion through the ages. If you do nothing else, make that man pay for what he did here. We will tell you what we can. Before you go, tell me this, old one. I'm curious. If you were to subdue your enemy, what would you do with him? What would give you peace? You would need to have twice as many lifetimes as he to repair his savage work. All the same, think on this matter. Be assured in your course. In the end, it may mean all the difference, not just to his soul, but to yours. And be warned. Some questions have answers that can never be learned. And it is those that trouble the soul above all others. May you find an answer to yours. Yeah?
Got it. What do you wish to know? Until we meet again. Builder's wisdom to you. more. Is not the water sacrificed unto the plant, and the plant sacrificed unto livestock, and livestock unto man? When the lesser soul is sacrificed to strengthen the greater soul, the whole of our family grows stronger. I suppose I get the argument. We all have to kill and eat, constantly for that matter, to live. This sounds like it's talking about the Blood Sands rituals. I wonder how, or even if, this is relevant to me. Would you look at...
light, flame, and sound. We'll keep to ourselves. As your blood flows, so shall your essence. Each generation, the Anumfath must stand before the autumnal beast in judgment. The wise endure, passing on their strength. The weak are eaten, their souls ripped to pieces and lost for all time, removing such weakness from the cycle. Well, I guess maybe my tribe wasn't entirely wrong about my spirit form being some sort of soul terror. I suppose I was hoping to hear a different answer on the matter, but... And look at this. As souls split into multitudes, many lives come from one. The truest of power comes from sacrificing the shard to return its strength to the mother stone. Hmm. The many lives from one sounds familiar. I was taught that sometimes between death and rebirth, a soul splits perfectly in two, creating two viable souls from one. Sounds strange, but it makes sense when you think about how the population has risen in generations. It's kind of a mathematical necessity that some process like this is happening. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. Quiet! Upon Burial Isle, the two men meet again for the first time, though it was the last thing they did. The many-colored beast rent them both asunder, they were, in death, merged, and made whole again. Cute story. Two guys meet in the belly of a soul-eating creature. Hmm. Maybe someday I'll eat two of the most insipid deer wooden lumberjacks, and they'll spend an eternity discussing beer whilst haunting my colon. Hmm?
You fought for the Deerwood in the Saints' War? You better grab a couple pints before you get me going on that one. No complaints here. Just be glad we aren't going through the back door to this place. No sign that anyone's been here in ages. Would you look at this? I am Heravius, child of the Fisher Crane, adept of the Hawk and Ivy, wanderer of Aretha. Too formal?
Amused, I suppose. Wow showed me that Galloway was answering my prayers. He made me the great hunter that I wished to be. The mauling wasn't a punishment, just a very, very hard test. And I think Wow showed me just now what I will become if I let this facet of my life be all-consuming. Yes, I've had enough of Galloway's tests and trials. Even if I could best every other man that wears the Autumn Stelgar mantle, what's the point? My heart isn't in the hunt like it used to be. Before the vultures get to him, figured I should take a reminder. Summoning your courage, you took a leap of faith into the pit at the summit of the burial isle. The fall seemed to take ages, but then, all at once, the ground rushed to meet you and end your life. Got it.
quiet. This won't stop me for long. The figurine. It's glowing. Would you look at this? <laughs> Would you look at this? Does an Estramore have with the fangs? Oryx Shadow. Any closer and you'll bleed out next to him. I never thought... I'd prepared myself to meet a stranger. To share the honor and history of my village with someone who... had no knowledge of us. Even someone who'd scorn our way of life. I was going to tell him about the years of abundance in Masuk. How his granddaughters have hunted caribou, and his grandsons made our walls strong. But he'll be gone in minutes. He must know that Masuk remembers him. If you've finished your chanting, we need to get to work before the meat spoils. Did your elders teach you even a mouse dropping's worth of decency? There will be other kills to dress and eat, but there will only be this one chance for Sagani to say her due respects. Have you no respect? A great soul inhabited this body. And it's gone now. What's left is our kill. I want nothing from the tongues of these carrion eaters, coming from people who revere stones and long dead Audra. It's not just worshipping stones, you fool. It's about respect for what was built by those who came before you. Persok means to you what those long dead Adra mean to us. She slanders the builders. I see your point.
Mm. Looks a little healthier than before. Welcome. Looks a little healthier than before. Have a moment to talk. A deer in the middle of Air Glonfoth. But I'm glad I can bring the success back to Masuk. And perhaps Persok will return to us one day because of it. To be honest, the biggest relief is knowing that my journey was worthwhile. That finding Persok and carrying our village's story to him will strengthen our community and return his soul to us. What do you think? Do you feel as though you understand the purpose behind your hunt for Theos? That would bring hope to many people, Watcher. I hope you're able to accomplish it. Anyway, Theos isn't getting any closer. Huh?
Mm. Looks a little healthier than before.